What is happening guys? This is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. Today we've got the new build out here. We've got the Element Gatekeeper, which is the chassis and cage here. And then I took axial Capra axles and fitted them to this chassis. So the Gatekeeper is known for having trailing arm suspension here. They're pretty short little plastic arms. And then I added the Capra axles and actually used the trailing arms from the Element there. I also got the Element sway bar in the rear because the trailing arm setup has a ton of flex and uh, in certain climbs and whatnot, it will torque twist really bad, so you definitely need a sway bar. Up front, we've got four link instead of three link on the gatekeeper, and uh, we've got servo on axle, so I basically just eliminated the whole servo mount out of the front of the element here, and uh, yeah, it should be a fun little car. So I've had one of these before that I've built. The original car I put rear steer on, which included cutting up a bunch of the cage and whatnot, and it just wasn't ideal. So on this build, I decided to just stick with standard front steering only and uh, leave a drag axle on the rear. Um, but it's a really cool, fun project. Uh, I, I like the look of the gatekeeper here, but I've always preferred to have a wider setup than what the gatekeeper comes with. So these capper axles not only add clearance with the portals, uh, they give you great steering angle as well. I've been a big fan of the Capra axle and I've put it on quite a few different cars. Uh, the other day, just by chance, I saw an Element transmission come up for sale locally. It was a pretty good deal, so I grabbed it. And then two days later, some kid puts up a chassis with a gatekeeper cage on it for a good deal. Oh, and I just couldn't pass on that either. So, and by the way, I happen to have an extra set of Capra axles too. So. Had a transmission, a chassis, a cage, and axles. That's basically a whole car. I have a bin with spare links and whatnot and was able to scrap together something to make it work. And here we are with the new build. It took me about two days to get it put together. A tr quick trip out to Sky RC Hobby Shop in St. George and uh, got some awesome electronics stuffed in here. Got a Reefs 299 servo. So my servo is really fast. I may end up changing that up to something with just a little more torque for this car. The 299 is really fast and it is torquey, it does good, but where I get these things wedged in these cracks like this, uh, sometimes I prefer probably somewhere in like the 400 ounce range, 500 ounce. See like right there, it kind of got overloaded. There she goes. So my original gatekeeper was a kit version and this one started life as the RTR, I could tell by some of the things on the car, the plastics, um, and then as well as the, uh, the pre-painted body panels as well. So I could tell that this is an RTR car. Um, not a big deal, I just tore all the Element stickers off of it and put my own sponsor logos on there. And I actually really like the paint job. I think it looks cool. I did all black and white stickers on it and I really like how it turned out. Got some Vanquish wheels on here with the scale beadlock hardware, scale hub hardware. Running a narrow hub setup on this, 225s from Vanquish. Come on. This pocket on this uh, driver rear tire here, the tire's coming off the wall and the car tries to stand up more vertical and you get more tire on that wall on the left side. Okay, now I need to get my front worked over because it's climbing too vertical. So my rear suspension's unloading here, that's a problem. Well, I guess it's helping stand the car's center of gravity up. It's every time I reverse, it's unloading all my suspension in the rear. So I might not make this pocket today, that's all right. I've tried this one quite a few times before and it's pretty tricky. Which, speaking of, we're out at a new location for the channel. Haven't been out here before to make a video. Hope you guys enjoy some new terrain. Trying to change it up just a little bit for you guys. I know, uh, the red rocks get so boring. There's only so many lines out there, right? Okay, we're gonna take the bypass here, and then we're gonna jump right back into this crack, though, because there's still more fun stuff to run. Let's jump around front, get you guys a different view. All right, if it rolls, it's going down, so let's try not to roll it. I guess we should cover that aspect of my old gatekeeper as well, is that uh, it had a pretty rough life. Um, I built the car, and I broke a few things rolling it, and then I got a kind of a rebuild going, and then it fell off a 40-foot cliff, legitimately. Fell 12 feet vertical, and then hit just a long slope where it just started tumbling and yard sailing parts as it was rolling. 
like battery ejected, wheels and tire, axle shafts were flying, bearings, it was real ugly. That was, uh, that was a good time. My buddy Tyson was out there and he was watching and laughing as it went down the hill. And then I rebuilt the car, spent over $100 to replace the axle housings and knuckles because I had two front axles on it. So I had knuckles and axles broke front and rear. Got it rebuilt, had to get a new cage. The frame rails were bent. I did my best to straighten those out, which never worked. They were always crooked after that. And uh, after I rebuilt it and spent another $100, like a week and a half later, I'm out there wheeling with Wyatt, get up on a cliff edge, find a cool little line, and what do you know, it falls off another 35 foot cliff easily, no exaggeration, and just all the way vertical, straight to the ground, bam, lands upside down. It hits so hard that the transmission ripped out of the skid plate, ripped all four screws out of it, and uh, it, de it destroyed the cage again, broke the nose on it, broke the tail section again, and I was just kind of done with dumping money into a car that I kept breaking, so I decided to convert it back into my Capra and after that it's been a rear steer Capra ever since. But after I had rebuilt my Capra I, I still liked the idea of the Capra axle gatekeeper. One thing I really like about these cars is the element transmission which is very similar to a axial three gear transmission as far as gearing reduction. Uh, you get one of those transmissions feeding these portals and they just have crazy amounts of gearing um, Lots of low end, you can really crawl these with a lot of different systems. And you pair that with an axe brushless system, and it's one of the smoothest, slowest wheel speed combos you can get. And that's what's in here. But what's crazy is I've got a 3300 kV axe in here, which is pretty spicy for a crawler. But because of the gearing on this car, it's not fast at all. It's actually fairly slow. Um, I was trying to get a little more wheel speed than I actually got. Uh, I could change my opinion and all that, yeah, but the opinion that came, or that I, I had one on the shelf, or SkyRC hooked me up with one, and uh, whatever that one choice was, apparently it's a small pinion size. That's a steep climb. This car's doing pretty good. Uh, the trailing arm in the rear adds a ton of articulation, which I, it does well for flexing out and whatnot. It's got some advantages, like a crazy amount of travel in the rear end. Um, as far as like going fast, this would be a great setup if you had good shocks. But uh, this thing has like two inches of up and down travel on the rear, it's pretty cool. So like all the way up, all the way down. You can see how much room there is between the chassis and the axle, and it'll go down and hit my axle. So pretty cool. Another cool thing is I actually ran the upper forelink to the outside of the shock tower mount and uh, that adds more triangulation so it doesn't side shift as much a little more triangulation on that upper forelink because the rear trailing arms are not triangulated you need to triangulate the uppers to get that thing to stop from wiggling back and forth that's something i learned on the last build now i'm definitely not a suspension geometry expert but uh, i'm i'm trying to learn there's just so much to it man it's it's crazy how much there is to it Oh, 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 we almost had that. This is more like Johnson Valley kind of stuff, dodging boulders. Which is where this Trent Fab car belongs. If you guys have never looked up a Trent Fab chassis car for like King of Hammers Ultra Fours, um, that's exactly what the gatekeeper looks like. It is certainly a Trent Fab and I think Harley Designs was the first one to point that out, so that's definitely Josh's idea over there. Josh is pretty into the Ultra 4 stuff, he probably follows it closer than I do, and he's pretty good at picking up on styling cues like that. But once you see it, and you see the real Trent Frabs, there's no denying that that's exactly what they were going for. Let's get our front hook up here on the front tire. These are Crawler Predator Compound had an extra set mounted on these Vanquish wheels and then I've got 3D printed inserts in here um, but these ones as far as I know aren't for sale so I'm not really going to mention who they're from it's just a local kid here in Utah but uh, once he decides to start selling them I can share that later these are a lot closer designed to the three brothers anti-foams they look more like it they're not the same but uh, they're like a dual stage 3D printed insert. They're kind of cool. 
Let's see if we can find our way around, right? And this is what I like doing in this area is trying to find lines up through these rocks and just like climb up the side of those mountains. So I think we are on the only line that's gonna work over here. Unless we go back where we were. Yeah, let's back off of this. So the wheelbase on this is just over 13 inches is what it ends up at. Trying to get this rear suspension to settle a little bit. There she goes. Oh, that was a good bump, I just didn't give it enough. There she goes. Ended up bellied out. That's where that rear trailing arm suspension can really help, is with all the droop. Those rear tires can stay in contact with the rocks, even bellied out really hard. That's it, that's it, that's it. Hold on to it, keep going. Get some clearance, nose down. Yeah, look at that rear trailing arm all rocked out like that. That was what I needed. I just needed the front end to fall down. And maybe we can drag the rears up and over. There's not a lot of wiggle room here. This is kind of our only line option. Holy hell, it did it. Cool. <laughs> All of a sudden it just grabbed traction. Usually when it does that, it just throws you off the rocks. But uh, got lucky on that one. And here we are out at the top. So I'm not gonna go on forever with this car. Super fun little project. Uh, you guys will definitely be seeing more of it in the future. And this is the kind of build where I usually change something between every video. So really looking forward to seeing what else I might come up with this car. You guys will have to let me know what you would do on this thing. Should I try and figure out the three link in the front? It's purely for the reason of like, Three link capper axle is just a more interesting setup to me. Uh, it's just harder to pull off. So I think that's the reason I want to do it because I don't have any three link capper axle cars. Until next time guys, my name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. There are affiliate links down below where you can pick up some parts from A-Main Hobbies. It's an affiliate link, same with Amazon. Anything you buy through there will add a little percentage my way. It helps the channel out. I am doing YouTube full time, so I would greatly appreciate it. Grab a West Desert Wheeler shirt if you guys like the channel. We will see you in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.